Welcome! Have you ever thought of a community as a stakeholder of a company? Why it is so and what does it mean? The reason why communities are stakeholders is derived from the idea that the company is embedded in the society. It acts like a citizen expecting to be respected by the society with its own rights while also having to respect the rights of others. Actually, the company does not pay for all the services of the society. Some of them, like the workforce, capital, public infrastructure, is covered by wages, taxes, etc. But even this don't cover all the cost of their provision. The company using resources of the society, culture, good institutions, social skills, collaboration, ethical principles, learn at home, responsibility for others, has to consider the society and especially the community in its actions. So we have to remember that the company, global corporate citizen, has to contribute actively to good public policy and human rights in the communities in which it operates. This means, in particular, taking the following responsibilities. This means to respect human rights and democratic institutions as well as to promote them wherever it is practicable which also means to be proactive and enhance such issues. The current issue may be the introduction of LGBT free zones in Poland, which violated the human rights of these groups. This can sometimes be very difficult because acting for the community does not always mean answering the requirements of this community positively. If a local community wish to be such a LGBT free zone, it can be difficult for the company to act against it. Another example we know from US and different treatment of colored people. The same issue concerns equal treatment of women, which may especially in some Asiatic or Islamic cultures evoke protest. In such a case, a company still has a moral obligation to act in interest of human rights and therefore for all, not only for men, white or heterosexual people. Secondly, the company should recognize the government's legitimate obligation to society at large and support public policies and practices that promote social capital. For instance, social skills, investment to foster communication between people. Thirdly, it should promote harmonious relations between business and other segments of society. Fourthly, it should collaborate with community initiatives seeking to raise standards of health, education, workplace safety and economic well-being. It also means not always responding to the wishes of the community, but acting proactively in making changes in the society and allowing and fostering the education and health of groups which are not as strongly considered by the community. Fifthly, the company should promote sustainable development in order to preserve and enhance the physical environment while conserving the Earth's resources. Sixthly, it should support peace, security and the rule of law. Seventhly, it should respect social diversity, including local cultures and minority communities. From this point, we can extract something explicit which was hidden in previous points implicitly, namely that we act for the whole community, not acting on the pressure of the marginals only, but rather dealing with all members of this community. The last point here refers to the necessity to be a good corporate citizen for ongoing community investment and in supporting employee participation in community and civil affairs.
To conclude, this is all about the traditional stakeholder groups and, as I told you before, we have the seventh point stakeholder, which is the natural environment. On this issue, I will tell you more in the next series of videos.